Good evening, everybody. My name is Ken Weiss. I'm the principal coach of the Domingo Kayfritz Young Artist Program at the Washington National Opera, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this preview of Mozart's The Marriage of Figaro. The Washington National Opera opens our season next Thursday with this sparkling comedy by Mozart, a comedy of masters and servants, of infidelity and true love, and of schemes and intrigues and plots by the dozen. Tonight, with the help of members of the Domingo K. Fritz Young Artist Program, we're going to introduce you to the story of the opera and give you a chance to hear some of Mozart's brilliant music. I want to tell you right off the top that uh, the order of the program will be a little bit different from what you have printed in your programs. Our Figaro, Andrew Bogard, is under the weather. He has graciously agreed to perform anyway, but we thought maybe it wouldn't be wise to make him sing three arias. So we'll be uh, adjusting it as we go along. As the name of the opera suggests, we uh, start out on the day of a wedding. We are in Spain. We're at the palace of the Count and Countess Almaviva outside Seville. And the Count's valet, Figaro, is marrying the Countess's lady's maid, Susanna. Now, those of you who have gotten married know that a wedding is not always a simple thing. And in this case, sure enough, major complications pop up right on the morning of the ceremony. And uh, to introduce us to them, we will hear Ariana Weir, soprano, as Susanna. Andrew Borgard, bass, as Figaro at the piano, will be Michael Sherman. Si 
So it turns out that Count Almaviva, after only three years of marriage, has become bored with his wife, and he has become fixated on Susanna, propositioning her even on the day of her wedding. And the Count is not the only one who threatens to interrupt the festivities, because Figaro also has an admirer. She's an older woman named Marcellina, who's long been obsessed with Figaro, and she once lent him money, and he promised that if he couldn't pay it back, he would marry her as payment. Well, he hasn't paid it back. And now she wants to enforce the contract. And to do that, she's teamed up with her employer, a lawyer named Bartolo. Uh, Bartolo has his own reasons for wanting revenge against Figaro, and he's only too happy to help her out. We're going to hear Bartolo's aria, which is called La Vendetta, or Revenge. Uh, we're going to hear Tim Bruno as Bartolo and uh, Daryl Friedman as Marcellina. Aspetta se il giorno fissato alle sue nozze per parlarmi di questo. Io non mi perdo e so far mio di coraggio. Perro per gli sponsali più avanzati di questo. Ma sto spesso protesto. Ed egli a me copri questo contratto. Certi impegni so io. Basta, conviene la sua santa terra. Conviene con arte e punti a rifiutare il conte. Egli per vendicarsi prenderà il mio partito. E caro così, mio mio marito. Bene, io tutto farò senza riserve. Tutto a me palesate. Avrei pur gusto di dar per mole la mia servantita. A chi mi fece un dì. La vendetta, oh la vendetta, è un piacer servato ai saggi, è un piacer servato ai saggi. Oh, 
tracci, l'obli a rompe le tracci, e bastezza è o mio viltà, e bastezza è o mio viltà. Sulcia con l'arguccia, con la giudizio, con il criterio, si potrebbe, si potrebbe, si potrebbe, si potrebbe. Il fatto è serio, il fatto è serio, il fatto è serio. A credete si farà, a credete si farà. Se tu godi ti rovi, si volge nei, se tu doli ti si rovi, si legge nei con l'inquinto, con l'inquinto, se non rimo fra che capoli o si troverà. Se tu non godi ti rovi, si volge nei, se tu doli ti si rovi, si legge nei con l'inquinto, con l'inquinto, se non rimo fra che capoli o si troverà. Qualche garbuglio si troverà, si troverà. Tutta Sibiglia Conosce Bartolo, il pirbo figo, osso sarà la Sibiglia. Conosce Bartolo, il pirbo figo, osso sarà il pirbo figo, osso sarà il pirbo figo, osso sarà. So there's Marcellina and the Count, and there's going to be a whole nother level of uh, complications for Figaro and Susanna, and that is because there is a loose cannon wandering around the palace. His name is Cherubino. He is a page boy to the Count. Cherubino is young enough that his voice hasn't quite changed, and so in the opera he's played by a woman, by a mezzo-soprano in what's called a trouser role. But he's old enough that he's begun to notice women, all women. And he's going to spend Figaro and Susanna's wedding day chasing as many of them as possible, including Susanna and the Countess. He's going to explain his state of mind in the aria we hear next from mezzo soprano Allegra de Vita as Cherubino. The aria is called Non so più cosa son cosa faccio. I don't know what I am or what I'm doing. Oh, 
Now, what about the Countess? Despite all her husband's philandering, she still loves him, and she wants to get him back. And she's thinking about him when we first meet her in the opera, in the aria called Porgi Amor. Here to sing it for you is soprano Raquel Gonzalez. Well, the person best able to help the Countess get her husband back is probably the inveterate schemer, Figaro. And Figaro, in fact, has a plan that he hopes will both help the Countess get her husband back and get the Count away from Susanna. The plan has two parts. First part, 
Figaro sends an anonymous letter to the Count telling him that his wife has a lover and is going to meet the lover in the garden. Now, despite the fact that the Count is chasing other women, he is terribly jealous. So Figaro's hope is that this will unsettle him and imbalance him and uh, distract him so much that he won't be able to interfere with the wedding. Part two of the plan involves Cherubino. Uh, the, Susanna is going to send a note to the Count saying that she'll finally agree to meet him for their tryst in the garden. But Susanna won't go to the garden. They will dress Cherubino up in Susanna's clothes, and he will go to keep the appointment. And the Countess will be there watching when the Count finds out who's under all those petticoats. Sounds like a perfect plan, right? There are always complications. And in this case, the problem is that as the Countess is getting Cherubino dressed in women's clothing in her bedchamber, the Count shows up at the door. And he is already in a jealous fury because he's gotten Figaro's note. Uh, Cherubino barely has time to go hide in the closet. The Count bursts in. He hears a noise from the closet. And he, of course, becomes convinced that the Countess's lover is hiding in there. Uh, the Countess tries to convince him that it's really Susanna in there, but he's not buying it. Meanwhile, the real Susanna is hiding in the shadows, trying to figure out how they're ever going to get out of this tangle. Uh, so we will hear as Count Almaviva, baritone Hunter Enoch, and again, as the Countess Raquel Gonzalez, and as Susanna Ariana Weir at the piano is Michael Sherman. Here's the Terzetto Susanna or Via Sortite. Susanna or Via Sortite.
the Count is tormented by the thought that his world is crumbling around him, that he's losing control. The very idea that his wife could be having an affair, the very idea that a servant girl could turn him down when he is a nobleman. He has a moment of elation when Susanna, following Figaro's plan, finally agrees to meet him in the garden. But then he overhears her saying to Figaro, we've already won our case. And that's the breaking point for him. He goes into a cold rage, and he vows that he will never allow a servant to enjoy the pleasures that are denied to his master. The Count's aria is called Ai Javinta La Causa, here to sing it for you, is Hunter Enoch. Ai Javinta La Causa, Cosa Sento? Quallaccio io cadea, per fi io voglio, io voglio di tal modo punirmi, a piacer mio la sentenza sarà. Conito figaro di cusa di dare una nipote in matrimonio. Coltivando l'orgoglio di questo mentecato. Tutto giovano da giro. Sola, 
delle vendette mie, quest'anima consola, il giubilar mi fa, il giubilar, il giubilar mi fa, il giubilar, il giubilar mi fa, il giubilar mi fa, All right, things are about to get even tougher for the Count. Remember Marcellina, the woman to whom Figaro owes money? Well, the Count teamed up with her, signed on to her plan to get Figaro to marry her rather than Susanna. Uh, and he's gone as far as to pay off a local judge, Don Curzio, to be sure that Marcellina's contract is honored to the letter. Uh, faced with a case turning rapidly against him, Figaro tries a desperate last gambit. He reveals that he never knew who his true parents were because he was kidnapped as a baby. But he suspects that they might have been nobles, and a noble person cannot be forced into marriage against their will. When Marcellina hears the words kidnapped as a baby, she suddenly realizes why she has been so drawn to Figaro all this time. And that realization is not going to make the Count happy. Here's the sextet from Act Three of The Marriage of Figaro, Riconosci in Questamplesso. Joining the artists you've met already is tenor Rexford Tester as Don Curzio. Un castello, ecco tua madre, Italia, tua madre, sua madre, cosa sento? Thank you. 
Meanwhile, the Countess has reached a breaking point of her own. Some elements of the Figaro's original plan have fallen apart, and so Suzanne and the Countess are forced to hatch their own plan. In this case, the Countess herself will dress up as Suzanne and go to meet the Count for the rendezvous in the garden, catching her husband, she hopes, red-handed. She's nervous about the plan, and she's humiliated that she has to resort to this kind of trickery to win back her own husband. She wonders how her marriage could have gone so terribly wrong. The aria in which she talks about it is called Dove sono i bei momenti? Where have those beautiful moments gone? Here again is Raquel Gonzalez.
The Countess and Susanna have not shared their plan with Figaro. He learns just about enough of it to become certain that Susanna has finally given in to the Count and is going to meet him in the garden. And so he goes to the garden furious to spy on her. Susanna, for her part, is annoyed that Figaro could mistrust her. And so she decides to teach him a lesson. Knowing full well that he's hiding in the bushes, she sings a lovely serenade inviting her lover to come join her in the cool of the evening. Figaro, fuming in the shadows, never suspects that all those seductive words are really meant for him alone. We'll hear soprano Ariana Weir to sing De Vieni Non Tardar. So 
So how are these two couples caught in the midst of so much turmoil and intrigue going to find their way back to true love? Well, you can find out by watching our production of The Marriage of Figaro. <laughs> it opens uh, next Thursday night in the Opera House just behind us. It runs through October 2nd, and the Opera House is not the only place you can see it. If this is you're the kind of person who gets hungry while watching opera, this is the production for you. Because next Saturday night, we will be live streaming our performance from the Opera House stage to the Jumbotron at National Stadium, uh, where you can sit back and enjoy hot dogs and popcorn and a beverage of your choice and opera all at the same time. It's our annual gift to the city of Washington, D.C. We call it Opera in the Outfield, in conjunction with the Washington Nationals. Uh, and we hope to see you there. I can't get into all the details of uh, what happens next. Oh, but I want to, want to tell you one more thing. If you enjoyed seeing these performers tonight, they have a special performance, a young artist performance uh, of The Marriage of Figaro on October 1st. A and now, I can't tell you all the details of how things work out. You've got to watch the whole show for that. But I can promise you that this is one of those rare operas with a happy ending. And we're going to leave you tonight with that happy ending. This is the very final scene from the, of the marriage of Figaro. It's called Questo Giorno di Tormenti. Here's the whole company with Michael Sherman at the piano. Oh, yeah, 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 o